No one is going to be surprised that Microsoft Flight Simulator is a massively complex game. Sure, there are a bunch of features that make the entire process of flying a plane much simpler, which is great. However, there are also a number of options and features hidden away that may dramatically change how you approach the game. Let's take a look at some of those. Ok then, so the cities in Flight Simulator 2020 are spectacular, particularly the photogrammetry ones. The way these work is by streaming the data directly to your computer from Microsoft's Azure servers. Now if you want a slow internet connection or if you actually want to download them, then you can do so. Head to the options menu, go to data and then manual cache. This right here is the manual cache, you can see some areas I've downloaded previously. The New York 2 option there, the region is around about 3 quarters of Manhattan, it's 5 gigabytes. San Francisco meanwhile is 10 gigabytes, that was the entirety of San Francisco. So the manual cache will give you a map of the world. You can zoom in and zoom out on this using the mouse wheel. And you can see, yes, it is pretty slow. So uh, whatever's going on here is very demanding on the computer. I haven't got a high spec uh, CPU, by the way, I'm running an i7-6700K and the, uh, the GPU is a RTX 2080S. Now, if you want to download or choose a particular region, you can navigate to anywhere you want in the world. Just go to the search box and type in where you want to go. For this particular example, we're going to go to Chicago. Now, I have sped this up a little bit. It is quite slow. It will take you directly to the location. It will look blurry when you initially get there, but the high details map will load in eventually. This took about a minute and a half on my 35 megabit connection. Now, go down to the bottom option there, create new manual cache and you'll get an option to type in what you want to call the region. Once you've done this, you can choose whether you want to download it in high, medium or low quality graphics. As you zoom out, the grid will change in size where you can choose a low quality. We can cover an entire region here. This is sped up by perhaps a factor of 10 actually. So uh, yeah, it is very, very slow, but I've sped it up just for the use of the video. As you zoom in, you can download increasingly high quality details. Getting very close, you can see it switches over to high. Those options do switch over automatically depending on your zoom level. And we can draw a grid around the area that we want to download in high quality. You will have to move around the camera somewhat to get a large area of high quality data. This will take quite some time to do, but it is well worth it. Now right here, I've put the video pretty much back to default speed so you can get a bit of a feel for how this actually performs. It is, as I say, quite slow. Now as we zoom back out in a minute, you're about to see the areas which I've marked for high detail, the areas I've marked for medium, and the outer area which I've marked for low detail. Once you've marked the area and you've completed everything you want to do, simply click on Finish and Download, and the game will download all the data for the chosen areas. The time this takes will depend on your internet connection as well as the size of the area you've downloaded. Also, it's worth noting that if you choose a large, low-detailed area, it'd be much quicker to download than a small, high-detailed area. So here we are then in Manhattan. This is the one I downloaded earlier, around about 5 gigabytes, as I say, and I honestly was really blown away by the quality improvement of the city. It looks very, very nice and much, much better than when I was streaming the data. So if you're on a slow internet connection, or if alternatively you just want to download the area ahead of time so you can get it to look the best it possibly can be, then using the manual cache option really is the way to go. The world mapping of Flight Simulator is an amazing achievement, and it's actually a way to use this to get to very specific locations. First though, let's have a very quick look at what it's all about. All the little white dots you can see here are various areas. They can be points of interest, airfields, airports, or towns, or pretty much everything in between. Now, if you want to find a specific location, you can use the search box. This is very easy and already well known. We type in London here and it will give us every location with London in the phrase. So this may be London City or indeed New London or anywhere else that has London as a part of the title. And indeed, we've got the points of interest down below, the City of London itself, as well as the Tower of London. This works for everywhere. We can type in New York and look at everywhere that's related to New York. Or indeed, we can look for a specific point of interest, such as, well, uh, Big Ben. Let's have a look at that, at the uh, Westminster Palace, Houses of Parliament. So there we go. But what if you want to find a very, very specific area that isn't listed as a name? Well, you'd be glad to know that you can type in longitude, latitude coordinates, 
otherwise known as GPS coordinates. Type this in, you'll get a search field and you can go directly to it. This right here is a mountain I like to visit in Wales, Brecon Beacons. Very, very easy and works with every location in the world. Now, not everything is about finding cities and airports and other such things. You may want to look for animals, for example. Before we get to that, though, there are other things you can do with the world map. We can use the weather layer, giving us clouds, precipitation, or just switch the whole thing off. You can see the next option down is the wind effect, and we can see the wind speeds at ground level, low levels, and a high altitude as well. We've got a friends option, which is quite handy. It'll tell you where friends are in the world and many other different filters besides. We can switch the markers off there for airports. A lot of them disappear there. There's a very interesting one a little bit further down. Let's uh, have a quick look at that. You may be a little bit interested to see there's a heliport filter. No helicopters in the game just yet, but maybe soon. The one I really want to show you though is fauna. This is animals. If we make sure this is switched on, you're about to find animals as they are around the world. Now, close the filters box down there. We can go back to the search field and simply type in fauna. This will give us a list of the various locations or points of interest where we can see different types of animals. So we've got geese, seagulls, grizzly bears, black bears, and indeed many more. So we're going to geese here. If you wanted to, you could set that as your departure point and you'll spawn right nearby the geese. Again, let's type fauna into the search field and see what else there is. Let's have a look for some black bear. There should be around the other side of the world. There we go. One thing to keep in mind is it may be night time. You're not going to find black bears very easy at night. So let's change that to a daytime. Very easy to do. Now, if you're looking for a specific animal, that's very easy to do as well. You can go to the search box and type in elephants, giraffe, or indeed whatever other type of animal actually exists within the game. We can then spawn right above the elephants here, making them quite easy to find. However, to save you the hassle of actually tracking them down, if you don't want to do a, a typical bush trip and find them yourself, you can head again into the options menu here, go to assistance, navigation aids, and look for fauna markers. Make sure this is on. Or switch it off if you want to do a genuine bush trip and track them down yourself. If it is on, however, as you're flying around, you will see the marker located to which you can fly directly towards. And there we can see the little tiny elephants. Oh no, they're not that tiny, are they? They're just far away. So there's a variety of animals in Fly Simulator at the moment, but apparently the alpha and beta testers have noticed there's file references or folder references for other type of animals such as rhino and other such things. Hopefully those will make an appearance at some point in the not too distant future. Okay, so you're flying around trying to take a look at the animals or whatever else is taking your fancy. You're trying to get eyes on and your plane is going out of control. What do you do? Well, there's a very nice feature called Active Pause. Go into the control bindings here. Make sure you select the all filter because otherwise it won't show you all the bindings and search for pause. Toggle Active Pause is the one you want. By default, it's bound to space, although I did rebind it to another key on my controller. Now we're going to choose a very specific plane here. Make sure you remember this one and keep it in mind for later in the video. It's the Icon A5. We're going to test out this active pause feature then. We're on the runway in the Bahamas, just about to take off. We're getting a little way into the air. Just imagine maybe you've seen something or maybe you think this would make a perfectly good screenshot at this particular moment. Press the active pause key and the plane freezes in place. Keep in mind that the world around you will carry on. This will mean that weather effects, other planes and everything else. It's just your plane that is completely frozen. Now you can jump into the showcase camera here. Make sure you remove the drone follow option. You can change the drone speed and the rotation speed to set it to whatever you want. And you will then be able to move the camera to wherever you want. You can go tens of thousands of feet up into the air or as close to the ground as you actually want. There's no limitation to the amount of distance you can travel here. You can go as far away from the plane as you actually desire. And all the while, your plane will be frozen in position. Very, very handy for checking things out and also nice for taking some stunning screenshots if you so wish. Back in the A5 then, this is a particularly interesting plane and one which you've seen me use a lot. It's something I really do enjoy. You can see right now the landing gear is still marked down. Let's put that up. It's in transit and what will happen is when the landing gear is fully retracted, we can see that the plane is in water landing mode. 
find any body of water here at all, whether it's the ocean or indeed any river, that's slowed down plenty and you can land right wherever you want. You can make some nice challenges here because you can land in small lakes, you can land in very narrow rivers inside cities. Ever fancied landing in the Thames or indeed the Hudson River, you can certainly do so. So then, I hope those five points have given you a bit of insight into some of the things you can do with Fly Simulator 2020 and maybe even given you some different ideas on how to approach the game. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.